G'day viewers, <clears throat> have you sadly become like me? You are tired of going to a church service on a Sunday to listen to lies and half-truths? To get brushed off with I'll talk about that or I'll see you later? To listen to people who exalt themselves instead of God? Who are very quick to judge they jump on things that are of little or no concern and use that as a means of judgment of others while they themselves neglect the most important aspects of Christianity, the most important things which are to love God and love your neighbour. How can they teach, preach or judge others? when they can't get the basic things right themselves but they're very quick to judge others regarding trivial matters of little or no consequence and this is why there's been a great falling away because people are tired of going along to churches that are really based around making money out of rich congregations that they're able to tell lies and half truths to over and over again in order to get their money in order to support a ministry that's about exalting themselves and not exalting God because they say that real Christianity just doesn't work Oh, that's too hard. Do you know how hard it is to do that? That doesn't work. And when they're pressed on an issue, you know, of biblical interpretation, they will stubbornly refuse to change their point of view or listen to the Holy Spirit. They will childishly keep saying no they're right no they are right stubbornness a hardness of the heart that's why people are falling away from these churches and even a lot of the video ministries out there at the moment <clears throat> the big ones that attract a big following they're in it for the same reasons unfortunately they're doing exactly the same thing they're trying to preach to congregations that have money they're trying to say that rich people can get into heaven easily or can get into heaven and that poor people may be left out of heaven things like this which are contrary to what it says in the bible to, let's be honest jesus never said anything about poor people being left out of, uh, of heaven. In fact, in the Beatitudes, or the Sermon on the Mount, he makes a point of saying, blessed are the poor. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he also explicitly says in Matthew, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Okay, so those that are out there preaching and saying uh, there'll be many rich people in heaven and a lot of poor people will miss out. That's, that's an untruth. That's not true. That's not biblical. Not biblical. So like I said, you know, <clears throat> once again, a lot of these video ministries are doing the same thing. They're teaching lies, half-truths. They're judging people on trivial or matters of little concern. They focus on those issues as a bone of contention, as a matter of judgment. Because they want to tell lies to rich people for the sake of their money. And the, for, the sake of, for the sake of exalting themselves on a podium in front of others to be popular. To have worldly success. You know, to have the big house, the big car, uh, the big family, to go on the holidays, to have the holiday home, 
paid for by church money. That's right. This is why people have fallen away from the local church communities. Because they're becoming like gangbangers. It's a little in-group that jollies each other along. But they're far from being followers of Christ. And it's a very sad truth. So, you know, I'm really hoping and praying that people will start to get back to the truth. You know, yes, it is. there is a gospel of um, justification by faith. That's very true. You know, the gospel in the nutshell is um, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart that he is God and you will be saved. That's not exact quotation of it. I could look it up for you and read it. But that's it in a nutshell. <clears throat> but that, that's the justification by by faith. You know, it is by faith alone we are saved, not by works. You know, once again, I'm just quoting from the Bible, or perhaps paraphrasing it without giving an exact Bible reference. But against that uh, teaching is the other teaching. <laughs> you see, this is why I'm talking about a half-truth. You can't just say justification by faith alone and leave it at that. Because you have to unpack what faith is. Because the other side of the, of the justification argument is, is that faith without works is dead. Boom. See, there's another scriptural teaching. Faith without works is dead. <clears throat> so there's the two aspects of it. Justification by faith and the fact that faith without works is dead. So I'm not talking a works-based gospel. I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying that you can manufacture your own works, good works. I'm not saying that. Because we walk in good works. Once we're given the Holy Spirit, we will walk in the good works that God has given us in advance for us to do. But what do you think those good works are going to be? They're things that might look manufactured. Like, for example, working for a charity organisation. Is that manufactured by me? Or is that a good work that I'm to walk in that was predestined by God. Who can judge that? I can't judge that of another person. That if they worked for the Salvation Army, if they worked for a non-profit organisation, that they gave to some poor beggar on the streets, they gave to a charity organisation, that they, they helped somebody uh, in a tough situation, you know, that they went and visited um, some people in an old person's home, anything like that. Am I going to judge them and say that what they've done is manufactured? Because I don't have the faith to believe that that was predestined, that that was something that, that was set aside for them to do by God as good war works that they would walk in as a working out of their faith. Can you truly say that you believe in in air travel? Can you say that um, you have faith that Qantas, a Qantas jet could fly me to heaven? And yet I never get a ticket on the plane. Or I never fly on Qantas. How is it that my faith is real? It's not, is it? It's theoretical. If I say, I believe Qantas can fly me to heaven on one of their 747 jumbos, but I never in my lifetime buy a ticket or get on a plane or get on a Qantas jumbo 747, then how is it that I have had actual faith? There's no demonstration of it. There's no working out of it. 
the theoretical nonsense is not good enough. I mean, Abraham demonstrated that he was a man of faith when he was asked to sacrifice his one and only son on an altar to God. He actually went up there onto the mountain with his son, all along believing and trusting in God, right up to the moment of just about to murder his own son on an altar as a sacrifice to God when God intervened and gave him an alternative sacrifice that he could use. There was another animal in the wilderness that was provided by God that Abraham was able to use as a, sub, as a sacrifice in substitution for his one and only son. But he went through with it. He didn't just academically say, I believe or I trust in God or I have faith in God, you know, that his good and perfect will is going to be done in this situation. He didn't just academically believe that but then never actually carried out God's instructions so the, the working out of his faith had to be carried out he had to go through with what God had asked him to do he had to take his one and only son <clears throat> to a place where he was going to be sacrificed to God he had to go through with it he had to actually walk the walk. Can't put it any clearer than that. Okay, you've got to actually go through with the steps of faith, which is and looks like um, good works that you might judge and say they're manufactured. They're not manufactured if it comes from a place of truth, if it's genuinely the will of God. If it's you trusting in God in your life, that whatever path he puts you on, he's doing it for, for a reason. He's walking you through that journey of faith, that working out of your faith in your life, giving you good works to do along the way. Not you, I'm not manufacturing it. You're not manufacturing it. If you're doing that as well, if you're not turning away from God and saying, no, God, I'm not going to, you've told me to go and sacrifice my son, but oh, yeah, I believe that that, you know, is what you want me to do. And I trust that, you know, that's the best thing in the situation. But no, I'm not going there. You know, I'm not going to do that. I still have faith. I still believe, but I'm not going there and I'm not doing that. Well, you're lying to yourself and you're lying to God if you like that. So yes, there is two aspects to faith and salvation. It's, you've got to unpack it. It's not just one thing. It's not just an academic intellectual belief. It's an actual lifestyle of things that you do that are in accordance with God's will. So, you know, preachers that are preaching of faith alone uh, and judging others and saying, the good works that they're doing, you know, working uh, for low money in, in a non-profit organization, you know, that's manufactured. Well, that's a judgment of those people. And, oh, there are lots of rich people in the Bible, you know. But did any of those rich people in the Bible get into heaven? How do you know they did? Does it say they did? Supposition. Sure, there may have been a lot of rich people in the Bible. There are, there were, talked about. But they're often bad examples, not good examples. A lot of the early Israelites, you know, the stories in the Bible about early Israelites and what they did and didn't do, um, you know, they were examples of people rebelling against God, not people following through with God's will kind of bad examples of what you shouldn't do not necessarily good examples of what you should do the only one that can really interpret scripture at the end of the day is, is Jesus himself because he is the judge 
that's his one of his titles, the judge of the world. So if anyone's going to interpret scripture, leave it to Jesus. You know those Bibles, those wonderful Bibles that have um, uh, the words of Jesus in red. That's very helpful, you know. But often, if you if you read it closely enough, you can tell that what is being said or who's saying these words in the Bible are quotations from Jesus himself. And he's really the person you want to be listening to, aside from all of the Old Testament stories, backstories and things like that. I mean, Jesus himself uh, quotes those Old Testament backstories and things in his explanation of how to understand God the Father, or God's plan, or, you know, reading and interpreting scripture. He explains it. And time and time again, when Jesus came across the Jew leaders of the day, who are, you know, analogous to uh, religious leaders of our day, claim to know everything, to be know-it-alls, claim to know how to interpret the scripture from their theological training and underpinnings. Uh, but in fact, all of that theoretical training and stuff like that doesn't have the Holy Spirit to back it up. It's academic, sure. Just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, their training was all academic. And they had a big institution to back it up and to say that they had authority, published published authors or whatever, yada yada, to back up what they were saying. And yet time and time again, Jesus as the judge says to them, you teachers of the law, you Pharisees, you Sadducees, are getting it wrong. You get it wrong every time. You get it totally wrong. And then he interprets it correctly for them. And then they're ashamed and go away, bow beaten, bow beaten. 